Well, hello, 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 squaddies. Hey, how's everybody doing? I am so glad to be doing this live podcast with you guys. How are you guys doing? Church Nelly, what is up? How are you? You good? I know that you live in the low country just like me. So just want to make sure you're good and you didn't get a lot of storm damage. Any other squaddies that live in the low country? That had to deal with this weather? <laughs> For me, it wasn't too bad. We're all good. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. So, squaddies, how is everybody doing? What's up? What's up? What's up? There has been a lot going on in the world of success. Hasn't there? I mean, a lot going on, right? A lot of good stuff, actually. A lot of good stuff. And we all know a lot of the BS is just coming from across the pond, right? But at the end of the day, there is a lot of good stuff going on in the world of success. So how is everybody's Sunday doing? Today is the Lord's Day. So Special K Thoughts, you know, I'm going to try to be good. All right? <laughs> I'm going to try to be good. But again, welcome, welcome, welcome to Success Talk. It has been a while since I've done a live podcast, and I apologize for that. It's just that, you know... It is football season here in Special K Thoughts House. I've got a youngin that plays football. So every Friday night, there's a football game. So Lord's willing, when football season is over, we will get back to our family chats, right? We will have our family chats on Friday nights when football season is over. <laughs> All right, I see a lot of the usual suspects are in the house. A lot of the dedicated squatties are in the house. I thank you, I thank you, I thank you for joining me during this live podcast. This was decided at the last minute. I figured I had some time today, so I thought I would go ahead and do a live podcast. So what do you guys want to talk about? <laughs> I'm just playing. I'm just playing. Of course, we're going to talk about our faves. But before we do, let me go ahead and get my channel right. Let me go ahead and get my channel right. Let's see here. All right. All right. All right. We got to get our tickler going, right? You know, I haven't said this in a long time, so I'm going to go ahead and say it. Okay, I'm going to say it right now, and then, of course, we will say it at the end of the podcast, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and get this off my chest. I'm going to say it right now because I love saying this, and I haven't said it in about, mm, what, maybe a month, two months? Continue to wear your SS on your chest because you know we are the best because we are, squaddies. We are. We're the best. Success squad is the best. <laughs> I mean, we are undeniable. Right? We are un... What's another un? We are undefeated. Right? We're undefeated. This is an undefeated squad. Really, really, really is. And I am so proud of everybody. And I love everybody. And I love being a part of this squad. I love it. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go ahead and look into the comments and see what you guys are talking about. I missed you too. I missed everybody. I did. 
you guys were on my mind all the time. I was thinking about you. And before we get started, those of you who are listening, welcome, welcome, welcome. And of course, those of you who are in the chat, welcome. I want to thank everybody who has joined our Instagram page because that page has just blown up. It really has. So thank you for following us on Megan, Duchess of Advocacy World Podcast Instagram page. And I want to give you some news about our Twitter page. (laughs) Right now, our Twitter page is locked up. I don't know what's going on. Well, actually, I do know what's going on. But to let you know, those of you who follow us on Twitter, our Megan, Duchess of Advocacy World Podcast, Twitter page is locked. Um, They're having some issue with the email address, verifying the email address. I've never had an email address on that Twitter page. But um, what ended up happening was um, I had said something on that page, which got me suspended for 12 hours, right? That's what happened. And well, I didn't say something, but I had posted something and (laughs) it got me suspended for 12 hours. So when it was time for me to verify my email address, it's like, I don't have an email address for that page. And since then it's been hell. It's been hell trying to get that page reopened or unlocked or whatever. Um, So we might end up losing that page. I might have to uh, do a Megan Duchess of Advocacy World podcast uh, one page or something like that. But anyway, so those of you who follow us on that page, that Twitter page, that's what's going on with that. Um, But anyway, that's okay. Because of course, you guys can listen to us on YouTube and we've got Instagram and um, we've got our Spotify, we've got our Apple Podcasts. So again, welcome everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm glad you guys are here. I missed you guys. And um, we're going to go ahead and get started because I don't want to keep you guys too long on this Sunday. And like I said, we have a lot to talk about. Hold on. I'm texting somebody. It's a squatty, just to let you guys know. It's a squatty that I'm texting. They're texting me. All right, got that out the way. (laughs) All right, squaddies, we're going to go ahead and talk about our faves. Megan and Harry, Haz and Megs, the Duke and Duchess of Success. They've had a lot going on, a lot of good things going on, like I said. And, you know, they've had some drama going on. But um, all I got to say is I can't wait till October 4th, right? October 4th. I can't wait. I can't wait. How about you guys? October 4th is a big day for us squatties. We finally get archetypes back, right? We finally get one of our favorite podcasts back, archetypes. So I can't wait for that. Um, Megan and Harry, we all know that they've been through a lot this past, whoo, what, month? But like I said, there have been some good things that have happened also so let's go ahead and get started with our success family chat let's go ahead and get our chat on everybody (laughs) i see you i see you miss lydia i love you i see you and thank you so much for your support church nelly i love you i see you thank you so much for your support sherry ware i love you i see you thank you so much for your support all of the member channels thank you thank you thank you for your support i really appreciate and i appreciate you guys' patience as well Uh, marshar i see you i see you Uh, cookies and cream i see you there's so many of you guys that i know 
who have supported us from the beginning. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, let's see who else. Just everybody who's in the chat. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Miss Joan Garcia, I see you, I see you, I see you. I want to see thumbs up. I want to see roses. I want to see hand claps. I want to see flowers. I missed everybody. I really honestly did. All right, let's go ahead and get my slides going. Gosh, I almost forgot how to do this. <laughs> All right, I mean, honestly, I don't even really know where to begin because it's been a while. Um, okay, let's see. All right, I was just putting stuff together, so it's gonna be a little janky, okay? It's gonna be a little cray cray during this live podcast. Um, a little cray cray. Just a little, all right? And if I go in and out, it's because there's a squatty that's texting me. I'm trying to get her to join this live podcast. But anyway, all right, before we get started, oh my goodness, Miss Joan, thank you so much for the donation. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I love to see you too. Oh, you wanna see me more often. <laughs> You know, once football season is over, uh, I should be able to do more live podcasts on a consistent basis. Okay. But thank you again, Ms. Joan, for the donation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and take it back a little bit. So we're going to walk back down memory lane for this past month, right? Let's let's take a walk back. Um, you know, we were doing good, right, Sex Squad? I mean, we it, we were doing good. Everything was great. Everything was wonderful, right? About a month ago. I mean, we were living fabulous. We were eating good, right? Harry and Megan, they were doing their thing, right? They were on this tour. They were on this tour in the UK, and they were in Germany kicking off the Invictus Games, right? That's where we were at. That's what was going on right about a month ago. Okay. So our faves, you know, they're in Germany. We're going to start off here, right? I would love to talk about Megan's speech at the One Young World event, but I think I did a podcast about that. So if you haven't listened to that podcast, please go ahead and listen to that podcast because it's excellent. We actually analyze Megan's speech. So we're going to start off here where Megan and Harry, they were doing big things in Germany, right? They were kicking off the Invictus Games. And here they are just looking as lovely as ever. Okay. And the crowd was loving them. The crowd was loving them some Megan and Harry. Okay. I mean, just loving them. Right. And, and I mean, it was just wonderful and it felt good and it looked good. Look at the crowd. Look at that. You know, that, that's a pretty young looking crowd. Right. There to see Harry and Meghan. OK, we, we, we were doing big things. They were doing big things. They were getting love. They were getting a lot of love from the, the crowd in Germany. But you know what I noticed about that crowd in Germany was that there were a lot of British flags and there were a lot of British umbrellas, right? <laughs> so the British community in Germany wanted to make it clear that they love them some Harry and Meghan too, right? And before I go on, I want to give a shout out to Chef Sandy Love. Thank you so much for the donation. We here at Megan's World Podcast, we appreciate it, okay? We appreciate it. And let me say that again. We here at Megan, Duchess of Advocacy World Podcast, we appreciate the donation. Thank you. And I hope that you are enjoying Sexist Talk. But like I was saying, you know, it was all good, right? It was all good. Look at the crowd, just loving them. And I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys have seen these pictures over and over and over again. But we're going to look at them again. All right. Look at that. 
I mean, the crowd just loving Megan, loving her. Okay, just loving her. The little girl, she's cute. <laughs> the little girl with the dark hair, she's cute. And then they are, right? Everything was great. Everything was was fantabulous. Megan and Harry, they were in Germany and they were kicking off the Invictus games and they were just doing their thing. And just reminding the world that, you know, at the end of the day, they are loved. Right? All right. And then the bottom slowly starts to crack, right? Remember that? The bottom slowly starts to crack. All of a sudden, reports start coming out that the queen is not well. Remember that? They were dropping little reports that the queen wasn't well and that family members were were coming to what is it Balamoral Balamorel however you say it right they started dropping little hints now I think the queen had been dead me personally I think she had been gone okay I think she woke up dead or I should say that they found her in the morning and she had passed away okay but while Harry and Meghan were in Germany they started dropping reports that the queen was under medical supervision and she wasn't feeling right. And then they kicked it up a notch. Remember, they kicked it up a notch saying that family members were coming to visit the queen. Right now, how did you guys feel when you guys started here when you heard that news? What went through your mind when you heard that news? <laughs> Harry and Meghan, you know, they're doing their thing in Germany. They got this crowd that's loving them. I mean, you could even run it back to what? Two days before, right? They were in the UK and they, they, they um, were at the One Young World uh, conference and one young world, that crowd was loving them, especially some Megan, and her speech was outstanding. And then they go to Germany and basically the same reception. And then bam, this news comes out that the queen is not ill. <laughs> now me, special K thoughts, I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> really? <laughs> but anyway. So, the queen is not well. She's under medical supervision. People are like, uh-oh, is she on her way out? Like I said, I felt like she probably had already passed away. They probably found that she had went ahead and gone to glory in the morning. Then reports started coming out that family members were on their way to see the queen. And we squaddies knew the shit had really hit the fan when news came out that Harry and Meghan were on their way to Balamoral, right? And we were just like, damn, isn't the Well Child Award supposed to be that night? So we knew that, that, that it was pretty bad, right? I mean, we all, we all knew that was pretty bad, okay? And then, bam, news comes out that Meghan's not gonna go with Harry. Harry's just gonna go by himself and see the queen, right? When that news came out, that's when I knew the bullshit was gonna start, right? That's when we knew that the bullshit and the negativity was gonna start. All right. And like I said, bam, <laughs> right? That's when the bullshit, I mean, the lady hadn't even been dead and buried in the ground yet. And they were already starting the negativity. They were already starting the BS. And I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why. Special K Thoughts is going to tell you why the negativity started from the jump before the queen had even passed on. Harry and Meghan were getting way too much positive press. 
I'm telling you, watch how the press functions around Harry and Meghan. Watch how they react when they get a lot of positive press. Okay. They were already pissed off that they were coming to the UK. Okay. And to get a reception like that in the UK, but to especially get a reception like that in Germany, it was making them nervous and it was pissing them off. Okay. It really was. Now, if these were decent people, there wouldn't be negative stories like this. First of all, we really honestly didn't need, even need to know the whereabouts of the family members, who was visiting the queen and who wasn't. We didn't, that was really none of our business, right? All the public needed to know was if she was still alive or dead, right? But I'm just, I'm just saying this, showing you guys this because it's my belief that they really jump-started the negative bullshit because they were seething that Harry and Meghan were getting a lot of good press, okay? So instead of just leaving the story as is that Harry didn't go, I'm sorry, that Meghan didn't go with Harry and neither did Kate. Kate did not go with Will to go visit the Queen or just to be with their husbands right? All they wanted to do was focus on Megan not going. And not only did they focus on Megan not going, they spend it in a negative way as she was not invited to go. Because that's how unwelcome she is in that family. How disrespectful, right? How disrespectful. But it's, this is not just about Megan. That's what they don't understand. You think you're disrespecting Megan, but you're making the queen and you're making the family look very, very petty around this time when you guys should be honoring the queen and you should be very respectful around the time that she's either dead or that she's dying. But they don't see it that way. They don't see it that way. It's like, how unroyal can you be? How petty can you be? Right? All right. And, you know, there, there's Harry. He's on his way to Balamoral. Okay? I'm looking in the chats right now. And exactly, it's always about Megan, isn't it? It's always about her. Always. It's always about Megan. Megan was not the only spouse that, that did not accompany their husband to Balamoral, morale, however you say that, right? Kate did not go. But no, they just wanted to focus on Megan and spin it in a negative way. But when it came to Kate, oh no, Kate didn't go because she wanted to make sure that she was home because it was the children's first day of school. So she wanted to make sure that she was home when they got home from school. But when it came to Megan, oh no, Megan didn't go because she wasn't invited to go. Like somebody in the chat said, how unroyal can you be? <laughs> right? But I love it for them. I love it when they do bullshit like this. Because it shows the world how petty and how cruel these people really are. All right? All right. And then, bam, you know, finally they announced that that she has passed on. You know, queen passed on, she went on to glory. Now, I'm not gonna put up a picture of the queen, but when the queen met with the prime minister, my God, she did not look healthy at all. Okay, she did not. And to me, trotting her out there was straight up elderly abuse. Those are my thoughts. Those are my opinions. Okay. Elderly abuse. Somebody did a real close up on her hands. Okay. And her hands look so bruised. Right. They looked black. 
and like there was just no blood going through her hands you know and I'm not trying to show Betty Grace I'm not <laughs> oh hell no I'm just saying she looked like she was not not knocking on death's door the day that she met with the prime minister all right all right so you know they announce her death she goes on to wherever she's going okay and <sighs> squatties how did you guys feel when they announced queen elizabeth's death in regards to megan okay i'm gonna tell you how i felt when they announced queen elizabeth's death i i really started to stress for megan and i'm not trying to you know victimize megan or nothing like that or you know make it seem like she's this victim or anything like that but i knew when that announcement came that she was gonna have to deal with so much bullshit. I knew, I thought, damn. Megan is in an environment where she literally has no support except from her husband, right? She's surrounded by nothing but vultures and snakes. And I just thought, man, man, she's got to deal with this. And I know she wants to be there because she wants to support her husband. I know it and I get it and I understand it. Okay. But there was a part of me that was, that was stressed out about the situation for her. But then there was a part of me that was so glad that she was there so she could be supportive or just be a support system for Harry. So he wouldn't have to be there by himself, surrounded by family members that are nothing but vultures and snakes, right? <laughs> right? So it was, it, it was just a, it was a mix of emotions for me. How about you guys? You know, it was just, a, it was a mix of, of emotions. It was just like, man, Megan got to deal with the bullshit, but she's also going to be there to be very supportive for her husband. So, Whew. how did y'all feel? How'd you guys feel? Miss P Talk says, I felt very sad for H. Yeah. And, you know, and I know I've, I, I felt bad for, for Harry because, you know, um, at the end of the day, that is his grandmother. And she's been more like, I don't even know if I really want to say that a mother figure. I don't know. I don't know if it's appropriate to say that. You know, because Princess Diana was his mommy, you know. But um, at the end of the day, you know, that's his grandmother. And Harry and Meghan, they both have always said nothing but positive things about her. So it is what it is. But um, okay. So Miss Judy. Is it Basil? Says, I was happy they were in England when this all happened. I am happy the world see how they were treated. Yeah, that's true, huh? Absolutely. Yes, indeed, she was. Miss Debbie says Megan was in the lion's den for sure. And that's what I was worried about. You know, that's what I was worried about. Her being that lion's den boy. All right, so then... And this is what I'm talking about right here. This picture right here, Lion's Den, perfect example. Why in the world would Will invite Harry and Meghan to do this walkabout? Why? Like why? Seriously. What was his motive? Okay, it's bullshit that he wanted to extend it in an olive branch. That's bullshit. 
because there were so many opportunities that he could have extended an olive branch without the public knowing. So this picture right here, nothing but a lie. It's a farce. That whole story about Baldy extending an olive branch to Harry and Meghan to do this walkabout, it's bullshit. It was very, very calculated. Very calculated. Okay? Thank you, ma'am. It's all about the optics. That's all it was. It was all about the optics, and it was written all over Megan's face. Okay? But some truth I definitely see about this picture. It's like, really look at this picture now. <laughs> really look at this picture. One thing that is true about this picture is you got one couple that is really in love with each other and that he has each other's back 150% and they're there to support each other. And you got another couple, they acting like they barely know each other. It's like, where are the body language ep experts when you need them, huh? Oh, that picture right there, boy. That picture. Ooh, if a picture could say a thousand words, this picture is saying a million. Okay? This picture is saying a million. All right. All right, so they do the walkabout together. And um, here are some beautiful pictures of Harry and Meghan. And um, like I said, it was written all over Megan's face. It really was. Um, Megan was, was, she was stressed, right? She was. Um, and I hate that she was put in that position. I do, I do. I hate that she was put in that position. Um, but she handled herself with, with class and dignity. And she looked good at the end of the day. All right. There they are again. I mean, these two are in lock and step. They really, really are. They're in lock and step. All right. Let's go on to the next one. Okay. And... I'm pretty sure a lot of people were aware of uh, the young lady that gave Megan that nice hug, which I thought was so, so, so sweet. Okay, so again, I'm going to talk about watch how the press works, watch how it functions. And I'm mainly talking about the British press. And when I say the British press, I mean all of the press. I mean the tabloid press, the mainstream press, also the supposed um, respectable press, right? To me, they're all lumped into one. They're all lumped into one now. To me, they're all trash. All of it. From the BBC to Sky News to to the Daily Fail to the Sunday Times, is it? The Sunday Times? All of it. They're all the same. They're all trash. They're all trash tabloid press. The BBC ought to be ashamed of themselves. They really, really should. Okay. Trash. So, like I was saying, <laughs> that walkabout with Harry, Megan, and them other people, 
right? I can only tell you what I saw on the American press while I was watching TV in real time, okay? And I'm telling you, the American press went crazy when Harry and Meghan did this walkabout with them other people. Okay, they did. And after that, that's really what the American press focused on was Harry and Meghan being in this walkabout with Will and Kate. And the American press also focused a lot on Prince Charles um, talking about Harry and Meghan in his speech, right? So that part of the narrative really started to take over. Okay, and it really got kicked up a notch when Megan hugged this young lady. Okay, when Megan hugged this young lady, okay, over here in America, I mean, that really started to kick it up in regards to Harry and Megan almost taking the spotlight. <laughs> okay, because that's when a lot of the reporters. And the news anchors would start asking these British press commentators about, okay, that's, that's what, that's, I'm getting tongue tied here, but say like you have a news anchor like Don Lemon or just whoever, right? They would have one of these British twat, uh, royal commentators on and once Harry and Megan did the walkabout and when Megan hugged this girl, a lot of the questions that people like Don Lemon, Anderson Cooper, just whoever, right? They would ask these British twat royal commentators about Harry and Meghan. The subject matter became about Harry and Meghan, okay? And I think the British press caught on to that, okay? So bam, they started to kick up the negative stories again. Right? They, they they weren't honoring the queen, this queen that they supposed loved to death. Right? It wasn't it wasn't about respecting the queen. Oh no, 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 no. It's like y'all are talking about Harry and Megan too much. So we're gonna wrap it up a notch in regards to the negativity. Okay, then bam. They they put the story out there about Prince Harry's military uniform. Again, we did not need to know about. Prince Harry's military uniform. We did not need to know that. Okay. I mean, it was common sense that he was not going to wear it. Wear it. He was not going to wear a military uniform. That was common sense. Right? But no, they wanted to throw that out there again for the negative spin to make it seem like Harry is just as bad as Prince Andrew. Okay, but what I loved, what Prince Harry did was he squashed that shit real quick, didn't he? <laughs> he squashed it real quick. Prince Harry's like, no, I'm not going to play that game. You guys are not going to make this about me in my military uniform. You're not going to make this about me in the uniform. This is about my grandmother. Okay, so Prince Harry puts out a statement. You know, and, and he says, hey, I'm going to wear the morning suit throughout the events honoring my grandmother. Okay, and he's saying, hey, my decade, my decade of military service is not determined by the uniform I wear. Okay, and we respectfully, we respectfully ask that the focus remain on the life and legacy of my grandmother. Okay. Was it that hard for the British press just to focus on that? Was it that hard for who's ever leaking all this bullshit to just focus on that? <laughs> Do they not realize and understand that if they stopped all of these leaks, then perhaps Harry and Meghan wouldn't get so much attention? Right? I mean, at the end of the day, they're going to get attention no matter what, right? But when they do these leaks, it magnifies the attention. But that's how dumb they are. Anyway, 
All right, so here's Prince Harry. And one thing I kept on hearing over and over again is that, man, Prince Harry sure does know how to do pump and circumstance, doesn't he? <laughs> and what I thought was so ironic about the whole thing of Prince Harry not wearing his military uniform <laughs> was the fact that he stood out, right? It made him stand out. He looks like the king, doesn't he? He looks like the king. Doesn't he? <laughs> and I just love that picture. Right? I mean, he outshined them all. He outshined them all. All right, next. And you know, at the end of the day, <laughs> he ended up wearing his military uniform anyway, right? His corrupt daddy gave him special, whatever it was, special permission, right? to wear his uniform um, while him and his cousins, uh, what did they do? What did Prince Harry and his cousins do? Did anybody get a chance to see that? I caught some of it where they, they, they marched out and they uh, did a standing vigil around her casket, um, which, which is fine, which is awesome. And, um, and, you know, I, I, I thought it was good that all of the cousins got together, all of the grandchildren, I should say, got together and um, and did that. Um, they all came together and presented one united front and and um, stood there for how long? What was it? 15 minutes, I believe, something like that. So, um, you know, that that's great. That's fine. Whatever. Um, I have a feeling all of this stuff was already written out in the queen's plans for her funeral. This must have was something that that the queen wanted. Um, and you know, I was thinking, <laughs> I was thinking, um, I didn't watch the funeral. I didn't, but from what I'm hearing, you know, it was it was a very um, grandioso type funeral right and i've heard comments that you know well you know they say that the queen was this selfless you know unselfish um she always put duty first her country first this that and the other loving grandmother yeah right okay but somebody was telling me you know if you watched her funeral that you can't help but think that she really honestly thought that she was a god. <laughs> that's, that's what somebody told me who's actually, I wouldn't necessarily say a royalist, but, but you know, they, they like watching royals. And they told me that actually her funeral kind of put a bad taste in their mouth. I thought, hmm, okay, all right. Okay, so you said it was long and boring. <laughs> I mean, 10 days, right? Is that how long it lasted? Like, I heard that, you know, she, she did a lot of traveling. You know, but um, again, I didn't watch it, but I heard from somebody who's actually a fan. Okay, they, and they're not just a, fan of the British royal monarchy. They're a fan of royals all across the poor period. Okay. And I'm talking about they're a fan of the Dutch royals, the um 
the Greek royals, like they 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 like royals, okay. And um, they were telling me that they watched every minute of of her funeral, and they said, to be honest, it kind of left a, a little bad taste in their mouth because they were telling me that you know if she planned each and every detail, this person was like. Good God, she thought she was a god. You know, they were saying people accused Megan of being a narcissist, but they were like, shoot, the, the, the queen is top notch with that, with that funeral. <laughs> oh, I know one thing, CNN and all them TV stations were pissing me the hell off. They pissed me the hell off September 11th. Because I remember I turned to T to um, CNN, and they were showing the Queen's funeral or whatever whatever was going on during that time, and they didn't show no special about nine one one or anything. And then we had a freaking hurricane that hit Puerto Rico, and they weren't really reporting on that. They were reporting on the Queen's death. It's like. What type of country do we want to be, right? Is this America? <laughs> like, hello? <laughs> but anyway, uh, there's Prince Harry. He's looking good. Um, one thing about Prince Harry, he can wear a uniform, can't he? He can wear a uniform. So, I mean, to be honest, there was a part of me that wished that he hadn't worn it. I wish that he just would have kept with the morning soap. <laughs> I do. But that's just me. All right. Next slide. Okay. So these pictures right here are from the actual funeral. No, you know, I could be wrong. I'm wrong. These pictures are not from the actual funeral. My bad. <laughs> See? See? This thing lasted 10 days. You, you know what I'm saying? You get confused. But anyway, um, the picture on the left really, really, really um, got to me. I almost teared up when I saw the picture on the left. Almost. Not quite. But almost. Because, you know, I knew Harry was really feeling for his grandmother. But one thing about Prince Harry, he wears his heart on his sleeve, doesn't he? I mean, he wears his heart on his sleeve. And there's um, the picture of Prince Harry and Meghan holding hands. And that's the picture that got all of the Karens all twisted out of their panties. Okay? <laughs> I just don't understand that. Well, actually, I do understand that. Okay? But... I guess what I'm trying to say is I don't see how you can't say it's not racist to be upset to see Meghan Markle holding hands. Ooh, did I just call her Meghan Markle? My bad. I don't see how you don't think it's racist to see Meghan to be that upset to see Meghan holding hands with her husband during his grandmother's funeral. If it's not racism, then what is it? You weren't upset when you saw Zara holding hands with Mike. And I know you saw that because nobody can miss Zara Tyndall's face. I'm just saying. And nobody definitely can't miss Mike's face as dopey as he looks. They were holding hands all throughout. Zara, when she when she um, curtsied the casket, she curtsied her grandmother's casket, still holding Mike's hand. But nobody had no smoke for that, right? None of them Karens had any smoke for that. No, all that smoke and all that heat and all that fire was geared towards Megan. All right. There you go. 
Megan ain't holding Harry's hand. Megan doing her thing, right? <laughs> I still say she does the best curtsy. All right, bam. Now these are pictures from the funeral, right? These are pictures from the funeral. Okay. And I mean, we all knew Megan was going to show up and show out. But what I love about Megan is, is that she shows up and shows out without even trying. Right? Without even trying. She's not even trying. I mean, look at her. She has no jewelry on, except for maybe the earrings, right? I mean, she has a plain black dress on. Look at these two iconic pictures. Look at that. This is one of the reasons why they can't stand her. She outshines them all without even trying. Without even trying. You know when she... Okay, wait. So Megan, she had to ride in the car with Surly Sophie, right? Can you imagine the stares and the jaw drops when Megan walked into the room when they all had to meet to get into the separate cars. <laughs> I bet you could hear a pin drop. I bet you could hear a pin drop. You know, this, those pigeon heads were like, my God, I want to be just like her. <laughs> Seriously, though, right there. That's royal history right there. Just saying. Two iconic pictures. Royal history. And when those pictures hit the internet, I mean, they hit, right? Hit! People cannot get enough of these two iconic pictures. Another one. Look at that. She's just sitting in the car. My God, she's just sitting in the car <laughs> on her way. And whoever took this picture was like, forget Sophie. I, I need to zoom in on Megan and Megan only. <laughs> I think it was Christopher Jackson that took this picture, right? He's like, shoot, let me, let me get my zoom on. <laughs> Sophie who? <laughs> but again, she's just sitting in the car. She got the weight of the world on her shoulder, sitting in the car. <laughs> now I'm laughing but this is actually serious now this is the woman that was sitting next to Megan on the way to that funeral she couldn't even fake it surly Sophie she couldn't even fake it look at that face Look at that face. And, and I don't want to hear, oh, you know, she was sad. Nuh-uh. She wasn't sad. Mm -mm. Hateful. Hateful and evil. Surly. She knew the cameras were on her. She's been in the business too long. She's been playing this performative game too long to be having that type of face in the car on the way to on the way to the funeral knowing that she's sitting next to Megan 
Somebody said demonic. <laughs> she does look demonic, actually. Actually, that's that's about correct. She does look demonic. Whew. I hope Megan had some praying oil. Mm, mm, mm. All right. Look at that. Not even trying. Just being her gorgeous self, surrounded by snakes, surrounded by vultures, surrounded by evil, evil petty women, evil petty, quote unquote, royal women. Nothing royal. And I was going to put a picture up of Kate Calchilla and Surly Sophie, but I'm not going to do that. A lot of you guys have probably seen that picture on the internet of um, where they're all four standing next to each other, but Megan is more so off to the side while the three hyenas are closer to each other. I was going to put that picture up, but nah, I'm not going to do it. Let's just focus on this beautiful woman right here. Right? That's right. The, the, there you go, Church Nelly. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, I was going to put a picture up of the three witches of Windsor. But uh, I, I was like, nah. Let's just let's just focus on Megan. Let's focus on Prince Harry's wife, right? Let's focus on Archie and Lilibet's mommy, right? That's a lot. That's a lot on her shoulders. That's what I was worried about. Okay, that's a lot on her shoulders. But you know what? Megan is a class. Act. Period. She is a class act. She knew that they were going to be gunning for her. She knew that they were not going to be graceful towards her. She knew that she was on her own. She was walking through the fire, y'all. Prince Harry was not with her the whole time. There were times where she had to be alone with the three witches of Windsor. There were times that she was on her own. And she had to deal with that mess. But she did it. She's a class act. And I'm very proud of her because I don't know if I could have done it. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe if I was drinking a lot of yak, perhaps. Right? And let's keep in mind, this is a mother. This is a mother who was away from her children longer than expected. That got lost. in these stories that she's got two babies back home that she's away from that got lost in the story that got lost in these leaks that got lost in these briefings against her that this is a mother who's away from two children underneath the age that are three and under Nobody thought about Lily, Lily and Archie being away from their mommy for three, almost four weeks. Nobody thought about that and, how, and what they're probably going through. Right? Nobody thought about that. Nobody thought about what this mother is going through not being with her babies. A mother that had a miscarriage, a mother that lost a baby. Nobody, nobody's talking about that. We squatties are talking about that, but nobody in the press is talking about that. Oh, 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 but Kate! 
Kate had to be home for her children because it was their first day of school. So she's a wonderful mommy for doing that. That's why she couldn't be with her husband because she's a dutiful mother and she needed to be home because it was her children's first day of school. But Megan gets no love. Megan gets no, no, um, no grace when it comes to her being away from her kids. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. <laughs> I keep on picking on her because I'm just, I, I can't believe this picture right here. It's like, really? He was a hater. Yeah, me too. I was happy that the kids were home in California. And I don't know those of you who know, but remember that that story? That was a lie. Remember the lie, the story that came out? Saying that Doria was going to bring the kids out? <laughs> we all knew that was a lie, right? Ain't no way in the world Doria was going to fly those babies out to um to Shutter Island. That was not going to happen. All right. Let me get her off this screen. Another picture, another iconic picture right there. Not even trying. Not even trying. And then that's a real iconic picture. I don't know who took that picture. I want to say it's Christopher Jackson, maybe. But, um, I mean, like, he purposely zoomed in on Megan and faded out. <laughs> Beatrice and Eugenie. Perfect shot. Iconic picture. That is so true. If it doesn't come from Harry or Megan or Archwell, it's not true. Absolutely. Just like all these stories about that damn book, <laughs> about Prince Harry's memoirs, don't believe it. None of it's true. None of it. Okay, well, let me go back. Um, okay, so, whew. Betty's gone. Funeral is over. Corrupt Chuck is now King Corrupt Chuck. Okay? And we're already seeing cracks in his kingmanship already, right? We're already seeing the cracks. We're already seeing it. We're already seeing it. Um... So, since Harry and Meghan have returned back to California, basically what we're seeing coming from Shutter Island is nothing but negativity, right? And all the focus is on Harry and Meghan. And... I'm just trying to figure out, well, I'm not trying to figure out. I'm just, not that I'm just, it's very interesting to me to see all of this briefing against Harry and Meghan when the queen has, hasn't even been, buried a week well maybe she has been buried a week i don't know i don't lost track of time i guess what i'm trying to say is 
I guess I am trying to say. I don't understand. And maybe you guys can help me out in the chat. I don't understand all of the briefing and all of the stories against Harry and Meghan while King Corrupt Chuck has just taken over. I would think, and this is just me, and again, we're not really dealing with a reasonable British press, but you would think that the British press would really want to focus on King Corrupt Chuck and that they would really want to build him up so they could solidify this monarchy. Is what I'm saying. Or really, really focus on the airheads and let them do their thing. You know, to to me, the leaking and the and the, and the briefing and 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 all this focus on Prince Harry's book. It's I I guess what I'm trying to say is I guess what I am saying is is all this focus on nothing but negativity. I do not understand why they think it makes the monarchy look good. I just don't. All of this negativity is so much negativity. I mean, to me, it's funny. <laughs> right? Because Harry and Meghan, they are minding their own business. They're just doing their thing. Okay? But the British press is just really twisting themselves in a pretzel about Prince Harry's book. Right? About Netflix. And I'm trying to figure out what makes them think it benefits them focusing on this negativity in regards to the sexuses and not focusing on King Corrupt Chuck. And when they have uh, who just, who was protesting the other day? They do not realize that within underneath their royal umbrella being heads of states of these different countries they got countries of non that are non african nations that are protesting wanting independence it's like don't they have better things to worry about so who was protesting protesting the other day was it wait yeah okay so it was wales there was somebody else oh scotland they want, right? Was it Scotland? It was Wales. It was Scotland. And there was somebody else, right? Or was it just those two? Okay. So it was Wales and it was Scotland, right? It's like, it seems like to me, you would want to really focus in on people that you have control over. Right? Or people that you represent, I should say, because they really don't have control over people in Wales and Scotland, right? They don't really have control over those people, do they? <laughs> Ireland, yep, Ireland's another one, right? Weren't they protesting? <clears throat> so why wouldn't you focus on those people? Why, why do they act like Harry and Meghan is such a threat to them? Because <laughs> I really honestly don't think Harry and Meghan are that big of a threat to them. I think their threat is them. I think the monarchy is a threat in itself, right? They're a threat to themselves because they are so outdated, right? They are so outdated and people just really question their existence, okay? So what I'm saying is, is that all this negativity about this freaking memoirs, you could, they have no control over Harry's memoirs. Don't believe none of them stories. They're all lies, lies, lies on top of lies. Okay? I don't think Prince Harry is updating shit. Okay? He's, this is the way I look at it. I don't think he's changed anything. If anything, he might be adding more chapters. Because his grandmother died. 
So he may add a couple of chapters in regards to self-reflection after his grandmother died, like how that made him feel, right? That's might be going on. We don't know. Just like they don't know. Okay? But they have no control over Prince Harry's memoirs. Right? All this talk about this Netflix um, reality TV show with Harry and Meghan, that's all bullshit. (laughs) They crack me up with that. Right? Because we all know that's not true. Okay? The titles. The titles about the children. It's like, really? Corrupt Chuck? Really? King Corrupt Chuck? Really? You want to die on that hill? I don't understand why people think that that's cool to be leaking about that. They should just be quiet about that. Don't say a word about it. Don't talk about it. Don't write stories about it. Because we all know he's going to do it. He's going to end up taking those titles away from Lily and Archie. He is. We all know he's going to do it, but he's scared to do it because he's scared of the public reaction. And when I say public reaction, I mean the global public reaction. They should have done that shit before Prince Harry got married. Right? To say, oh, well, he's been talking about it since da 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 Well, they should have done it before Prince Harry got married. Okay? Or they should have done it before Meghan had Archie. But see, the reason why they don't want to do it now is because they know that people are going to be like, oh, so Meghan was telling the truth. Right? Oh, Miss Lydia, thank you so much for the donation. We here at Megan Duchess of Advocacy World Podcast. We appreciate it. But yeah. All the, you know, the titles, they're gonna take, they're gonna take them titles. Just take them, damn it. Take the freaking titles away from those babies. Go ahead, take them. Take them. Just just do it. You don't have to write 10,000 stories about, oh, well, well, you know, King uh, Corrupt, he's holding on to the titles because he's waiting to see what Prince Harry has to say in his book about him. What in the hell makes you think that makes the monarchy look good? Oh, so so we're just going to be happy that we're a petty monarchy? <laughs> it's a big clown foolery joke. Yes, we're going we're gonna to punish these, a three-year-old and a one-year-old, and hold on to their titles, and we're just going to wait to see what their dad has to say about the king in his book. Really? <laughs> First of all, they already have those titles, right? Lily and Archie are already prince and princesses. They already have that title. They got those titles as soon as Betty kicked the bucket. It was automatic. The real story is is that Prince Charles is making the decision to take those titles away from them. That's what the real story is. So, like Megan said in the Oprah Winner. Oprah Winfrey interview. I don't understand why they don't just tell the truth. Just tell the truth. We weren't asked to appear on the steps at the hospital after I had Archie. We weren't asked to do it. We never said we didn't want our kids to have titles. We never said that. And yes, there were conversations to change the convention while I was pregnant. Because they didn't want Archie to have a title. Just tell the truth. (laughs) Right? Just tell the truth. (laughs) Miss Carol, thank you so much for the donation. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And, you know, it's like they talk out of their 
asses. They talk out of both sides of their mouths because I just don't understand. I don't understand. Well, I do understand. I take that back. I'm, 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 I'm not being honest here. I do understand, actually. But the British monarchy is not like, it's not like the, what is it, Dutch, Norwegian? Those monarchies are small, okay? But the British monarchy is pretty huge. Okay, they they have they have a lot going on. And let's keep it real. We all know them airheads, they're lazy. <laughs> and to say that, you know, Prince Harry needs to come back and help William. Well, why in the hell would Prince Harry come back and help William when you guys don't even want to give his children a title? Like, really? I mean, it makes no sense, but it does make sense. And I'm going to tell you why it makes sense. It's because Prince Harry's children don't count. They don't give a shit about those kids and they never have and they never will. The attacks against Meghan ramped up once they revealed that she was pregnant. They're that disgusted that Prince Harry has mixed race kids. I'm telling you, that blue blood is serious. And they're that they're that disgusted and they're that upset. And they're that, excuse me, disgusted and they're that upset that Prince Harry left. But, but at the end of the day, they're willing to take him back as long as he comes back alone. That's true. The truth will set you free, won't it? Won't the truth set you free? Stop being a punk. Just take their titles away. Just do it. Stop being a bitch and do it. Take their titles away. All, all this, oh, you know, we're going to hold on to the titles and see what. Okay, so Prince Harry drops his book, okay? If Prince, when Prince Harry drops his book, right? And there's absolutely nothing in there that says anything negative about Prince Charles. Then what? Then what? Then what? What's the worst thing that Prince Harry could say about Prince Charles? What, that he wasn't really there? Or that he cheated on his mom? I mean, we all know that. What's the what's the worst thing that Prince Harry could say about Prince Charles? What, that he didn't return his phone calls? Like, really? <laughs> but I'm just saying... Memoirs drops. There's really nothing in there that makes Prince Charles look like an evil asshole. Then what? <laughs> so anyway, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and go back in the comments, see what you guys are talking about. No, he's not. And that 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 and I think until they're dead and buried, that's always going to be the hope. The hope is always going to be that Harry leaves Megan and his kids. They will always and forever hold on to that hope that he will leave them and he will eventually come back and he'll marry an English rose. They will forever hold on to that hope. Yep. They hate not having any controls over the book. I'm reading comments for those of you who are listening. This is a comment 
by what's that? Hidley, Hidley Joseph. They hate not having any controls over the book. Yeah, they just hate having. They just hate not having control over Prince Harry. Period. See, they're used to controlling King Corrupt. They're used to that. They're used to controlling him. They control William. They control William. They try to present like, you know, William is 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 going to be a great king and yada, 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 yada. But as long as they can control him, he will be a great king. And you know what cracks me up about the whole control is thing is they've never been able to control Harry. <laughs> right? They've never been able to control Harry. He has always been the rebel. So I don't know why they're acting brand new. I don't know why they're putting out these little threats, acting like he's gonna cower down to them. It's like he left your country. He decided not to be a working royal anymore. What more does he have to do to let you guys know he ain't fucking with you no more? <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. That's all I'm saying. I mean... When you look at the whole thing, King Corrupt Chuck, his reign is going to be messy. It really is. You talk about a downfall. I mean, I mean, Queen Elizabeth's reign, in my opinion, was messy. Right? Very, very messy. But Prince Charles, well, not Prince Charles, King, King Corrupt. He's going to take that shit to a whole nother level when it comes to the messiness and the pettiness. He really, really is. And I hope, I hate to say this because I know there's a lot of UK squatties, but I hope Harry and Meghan do not make a lot of trips to the UK. <laughs> it's like, do it maybe once a year and that's it. <laughs> Because all of this stuff, all of these leaks and stuff came out just because they were in the UK. You know? Just because they were in the UK. Um, let's see, what are you guys talking about? No, but... You know, seriously, his, 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 his reign is going to be messy, it's going to be petty, and it's going to be corrupt. It really, really is. It's going to be messy. It's going to be petty. And it's going to be corrupt. All right, guys. Let's go ahead and talk about some positivity. <laughs> like I was saying, you know, man, oh, Megan, Megan. Megan, y'all. You know, Be Betty really jacked us up. She really, really did. Because Megan had a huge week planned, didn't she? She had a huge week planned. Huge week, right? We found out she was supposed to go on the Jimmy Fallon show. That got canceled, right? She was supposed to make an appearance at the UN, the United Nations. That got canceled. We didn't know about that. That got canceled. Man. She was going to um get an award uh, for the, for Variety, right? Women of Power, the Variety. Variety just had something to where they honored uh, Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, right? They, uh, they honored all of these um, global female influencers and Megan was going to be a part of that and she bowed out gracefully my god what else did Megan have going on that week was there anything else 
I mean, she was going to have a huge week, but she put all of that aside for Harry's grandmother. But she gets no love for that, does she? Does she get any credit for that? Huh? Megan get any credit for that? Does Megan get any credit for being away from her babies for three weeks? Does she get any credit for canceling her appearance at the UN? United Nations? Does she get any credit for canceling going on Jimmy Fallon? Does she get any credit for not accepting her award or being honored at the, um, I want to get it right. I got to look it up. But Variety was ha uh, honored some global female influencers. And Megan was one of them. She canceled that. She's going to be honored at another time. That is huge. She put all of that aside for Harry's grandmother. And then she put the podcast on hold. We didn't get no archetypes for three weeks. You know, those moves don't sound like somebody who's narcissistic to me. <laughs> I'm just saying. Those moves don't sound like somebody who's narcissistic to me. Hmm. TCC Sun, thank you so much for the donation. Thank you. I appreciate it. But like I was saying, guys, Archetypes is, is coming back. It's coming back. So we're going to get a new episode of Archetypes October 4th. So can't wait for that. Um, and of course, that episode is going to feature conversations with Margaret Cho and journalist Lisa Ling. And I can't wait for that because I love me some Lisa Ling. Don't you guys? <laughs> so we all know that's going to be good. And I'm hearing that Megan's podcast in some countries is still in the top five. I mean, that's huge. So can't wait for Tuesday. That's going to be awesome. And, you know, Megan, uh, their, their spokesperson released a statement, like somebody in the chat said, you don't believe anything unless it comes from Harry and Megan's spokesperson. So their spokesperson let us know that Archetypes is coming back October 4th. And they also let us know that Megan and Prince Harry, you know, they were in the United Kingdom for three weeks. I mean, she was three weeks away from her babies. I can't stress that enough. So they were in the United Kingdom for three weeks following the Queen's death upon returning home to California. The couple intends to take a week off to spend some time with their children. When I read that, I breathed a sigh of relief. Okay, I'm glad that they're doing some family time, spending some time with their kids. Um, and just, you know, spending time with their kids and spending time with each other because they've, they've gone through a lot. So glad to hear that. And at the end of the day, that's what it's all about, right? That's what it's all about. It's all about family. It's all, it's all about their family. It's all about Megan, Harry, and their children because at the end of the day, they are a family. This is Prince Harry's family right here. Bam, right in front of your face. You see the biracial American woman that's holding the cute baby girl, okay? And the little boy that he's holding, that is Prince Harry's family. Not some other people. Not them other people. This right here is his family. They come First, King Corrupt is not Prince Harry's priority. Being them people's wingman is, <laughs> is not his priority. <laughs> okay? But I guarantee you King Corrupt's priority is his trash illa wife. 
I guarantee it. That's his priority. Now, when it comes to William, I don't know if his wife is his priority. I don't know. I don't know. I ain't going to say all that now. <laughs> ah. All right, guys. We have come to an end of this live podcast. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I did. I enjoyed it, actually. Um, we got through enough. Um, I hope everybody enjoys the rest of their Sunday, and I hope everybody in the low country. Oh, you know what? I am so sorry. Florida squatties. Usually we have a lot of for Florida squatties in this chat, and a lot of Florida squatties that are listening. Um, I hope you guys are okay, and I hope you guys are safe. Okay. Florida squatties. We're all thinking about you guys. And I'm not just saying this. I'm saying it because it's true. A lot of you Florida squatties are on my mind. I go to Florida a lot. I have been to Fort Myers numerous times. And it hurts my soul to see what happened to Fort Myers. It really, really does. Okay, me and my better half, we love our Florida trips. He loves to go boating in Florida. We've got friends in Florida. We've got veteran military buddies that live in Florida, and we all love to get together and go boating, go fishing, and hit different bars. I mean, that's something we love to do. So it hurts me to my soul to see Fort Myers in the condition that it's in. So I want to give my heartfelt blessings to all of the Florida squatties. And of course, all of my heartfelt blessings to my low country, South Carolina squatties and even people in North Carolina got affected. So if, if, if you did, you're in my prayers as well. So Florida squatties, we're thinking about you guys and We'll be praying for you guys. Okay. All right. Um, so I want to see hand claps. I want to see thumbs up. I want to see roses. I want to see flowers. Um, if you are not a subscriber to Megan, Duchess of Advocacy World Podcast, I'm going to need you to go ahead and hit the subscribe button, please. <laughs> And again, I want to thank you guys for listening. And please, please keep the Florida squatties in your prayers. And and just everybody on the coastal part of the United States, period. (laughs) Right? Because I got a feeling there's going to be another hurricane brewing pretty soon. Because that's the way it usually works, right? There's a big one that hits. And then there's a monster one that hits after that one. Right. So we're not out of danger yet. We're, we're just not. Hurricane season is not over yet. All right, guys. It's time for us to go ahead and end this live podcast. Um, I know I definitely cannot do another one f- this upcoming Friday night, but I will try to do another live podcast Sunday or perhaps just put out another podcast. Uh, I appreciate you guys joining me this evening. I hope you guys had fun. God bless everybody. And I love you. I love you all. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to say our rebel yell. You guys remember what our rebel yell is? (laughs) I know you do. But before we go again, I want to thank all of the channel members. And if there's a channel member that wants to be a part of the live podcast, please let me know. Let me know. I'm pretty sure that people would love to hear your voice. (laughs) So let me know if you're a channel member and you want to be a part of this live podcast. We would enjoy and love your commentary as well. 
All right, guys, you guys ready? It is time to go ahead and do our Rebel Yell. Ready? Continue to wear the SS on your chest because you know we are the best. All right, squaddies. I want you guys to enjoy the rest of your day and I will see you soon. Bye, squaddies. Ha, <laughs> ha,